me mm-hmm. 
Uh, good evening, saints. Uh, welcome to our uh, prayers. Um, we would like to welcome every one of you uh, to this uh, session, prayer session. And we hope that uh, we have had a good week so far and that everything is going according to plan. I uh, would like to thank the Lord for giving us yet another opportunity to meet as uh, brethren to uh, worship him. Uh, the Bible says uh, somewhere in Hebrews, uh, I think it's Hebrews 10 verse 25, that it is good for brethren to meet uh, one another. And it, it says that uh, we should continue in this habit of meeting one another. We should not uh, do away with this habit as some were doing at the time that uh, the writer was writing. Now we are still on the topic, uh, blessed to be a blessing. It's our stewardship month and the uh, theme is a blessed to be a blessing. And um, today we have got yet another uh, exciting topic, which is entitled called to invest, called to invest. Uh, last week we had a, an exciting one, which was uh, on Christian entrepreneurship. Uh, a brother Lindelan Jovu took us through that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, just maybe to connect uh, the, 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 the topic that we're going to have today with the ones that we've already had, uh, we spoke about the fact that we are in partnership with God. We are in partnership with God in every venture that we do. We need to be able to work in partnership with God. And then we also spoke about the concept of accountability, uh, being accountable in almost everything that we do really, not only in business, but in every aspect of our lives. And then we also spoke about the importance of having a balanced mind, you know, somebody having a balanced mind, somebody being able to say when you uh, have been blessed by the Lord, you have a balanced mind. You, you are able to remain grounded, as it were. You don't suddenly start losing it life in a very different way than um, you used to before you had been blessed. So before we uh, start, we shall have a word of prayer. And after the word of prayer, I'll hand over to Sister Namisa to uh, give us the uh, presentation for this evening, which is entitled Called to Invest. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Father in heaven, this evening, we'd like to thank you once again for yet another opportunity to come before your holy throne, to come and learn at your feet. Lord, we thank you for the week, uh, for the week so far. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for the provision that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for the month of stewardship, which reminds us that we are custodians of everything that you have created. Lord, as we are going to listen to the presentation for this evening, may you give us receptive hearts so that, Lord, at the end of it all, we shall be different and we shall be better stewards. May you be with Sister Namisa as she is going to speak to your children. We pray all this in the wonderful name of our soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Sister Namisa, I will hand over to you. Um, good evening, church, and thank you so much, um, Elder Moyo. I'm not sure if I'm audible. Uh, my network is playing games with me. Am I audible? Can I just see a thumbs up? Yes, yes, you are audible, visible. 
Okay, today I was chilling, relaxing, and then I got a message from Elder Mlanjana asking if the presentation is ready, uh, the PowerPoint presentation with videos and everything. And then I was freaked out because I did not pre prepare presentation at the time. I had my talk in my head and somehow in some piece of paper. Um, today we're gonna cover a topic as already mentioned by Elder Moyo called um, to invest. And maybe before we even look at the Bible, uh, let's discuss, or maybe let's define what we mean by investment. So the definition that I came across, which I loved very much said, when you invest, you dedicate an asset. So again, you're gonna have to define what is an asset. An asset loosely defined is a resource that you own from which you expect economic benefits to flow from you. Let's just leave it at that. And when you dedicate that, this asset, you have an objective to obtain an increase or what you call a return over a period of time. So I'm stressing some of these terms because we're gonna have to discuss them more in detail as we continue with the presentation. Um, the presentation is gonna cover a lot of things. The first question that we're gonna ask ourselves, should Christians invest their money? Are we supposed to invest? And we're gonna learn some perplexing facts that were shared by Edward in one of his books that says, it's your money, isn't it? Makes, uh, which makes some perplexing facts about the Christianity and how they, um, their attitude towards money. And then we're gonna look at basic functions of money. We might think these things are obvious, but we're just gonna discuss, cover those. And then we're going to look at foundations for investing. You're not just going to um, invest haphazardly. There's foundations to this thing. And there's principles for investing. And maybe briefly, we can look at types of investments that we can look at. And then we'll conclude our discussion. I need to apologize up front. This discussion might be a bit technical in some aspects and might not be as um, interesting as last week's topic was. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, Tabani, which is slide on, should Christians invest their money? So there's a parable in the Bible, which is contained in the book of Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. We're all familiar with this parable. Here, there's a master who's going away. Before he goes away, he calls all his servants and um, he gives them talents. One thing that we need to notice in this parable, he gives them talents in terms of their capabilities and abilities. So he gives one five, he gives the other two, he gives the other one, okay? And then when he comes back, he asks them for a record of what they did with the money. So you'll remember the story, the other one who had five had 10 now so he added five more the other one who had two had four now and the other one who had one decided to do something weird about his talent and he did so the question you may be asking yourself is this parable not about the talents as we know them say singing preaching or smiling at visitors or welcoming visitors or giving to the poor the answer yes this parable can be applied towards us using our talents as we know them However, this talent also talks to, this parable also talks to us using the money that God has given us wisely. And that means we should, and we are expected to invest. There's other verses that I've mentioned in this particular slide. First Chronicles 29 verse is 11 and 12 and Psalms 24 verse one to two, which is a very familiar text. The earth is of the Lord and all its fullness thereof. Um, but basically what we learn from these verses is that everything that we have, it comes from God and God wants us to use the resources that is given us to glorify him. And God expects his money, which is his, to be managed in the best possible way. So to answer the question, should Christians invest? The answer, yes, we are expected to invest. Um, in the next slide, Edward Rage. Um, he wrote a book that says, it's your money, isn't it? He makes the following compelling statements. He says, financial factors contribute 90% of family breakups. 
I'm not sure when the study was conducted, but if 90% of factors that contribute to family breakups, then we need to take money seriously. And um, we also, he also says 40% families, they overspend every month. So we are living on overdrafts, we are living on credit card, that means we spend more than we earn. And um, the other compelling discovery or statement that he made is that 40% of people spend thousands of money per annum on interest. And this interest excludes mortgages or your, your bond as you know it. That means again, if you are going to overspend, that means you're living on credit card or on overdraft and therefore you are paying interest on those, on those facilities. Hence, then we have this too much spending on interest, which is runs to thousands of money per annum. And he also make a statement that it's not like we are not familiar with the money that we make, but we have arrogance towards how we handle or how we manage and finding that at the planning habits. Am I still audible? Yes, yes, we can okay. hear you. Yeah. Then the other statement is that very few families have a family budget. And if that family has a family budget, the individuals in that family, very few of those individuals in that family have an individual budget. And generally there's a lack of financial planning around. So these are the facts that we need to look at and we need to ponder on and consider as we go through this presentation. So let's quickly touch on the basic functions of money. Basically, there's three functions. One is to provide for your immediate needs, your food, your shelter, your accommodation, which is shelter, um, your day-to-day -day running of your life. You can also save money for the future. When you retire, you need to have money. Uh, or you can just take the money that you have now and just give it away to charities. So those are the basic three functions of money. Now, before we talk about investing, we need to lay down the foundations, okay? And um, the one author says, we need to prayerfully think about it when we are going to invest. So we are like, Lindelani mentioned last week, we are in partnership with God. So you cannot make any decision, any financial decision without consulting God first. You need to seek God's guidance and you need to prayerfully submit to God's will. Then the second aspect uh, uh, to foundation to investing is that you need to make a budget that you can live with. Um, I've noticed that some people, when they start investing, they get all excited. There's a presentation on investment products. They get excited. And therefore, they invest in, they, they go beyond their means. And within no time, they are cash trapped. Their cash flows are not coming in. And therefore, they get discouraged along the way. And then they stop, they stop investing altogether. Um, the other foundation to investing, it was saying you need to be debt free as much as possible. And if you think about it logically, that is one thing that stops people from investing because all you are concerned with is to finance or refinance the debt that you have. Remember that 40% that you spend on interest is as a result of debt. So if you have too much debt, you're going to struggle to have excess cash to invest. Am I making sense? So that's another thing. Also, when you are investing, you need to make sure that in your portfolio of investments, you have investments that can be accessed quickly for emergencies. But I'm gonna to touch more on that when we go through the, the different classes of investments. Okay, I think we can move to the next slide. Uh, Tabani, now we go to um, principles for investing. Here, uh, I found this to be very interesting. The first one, you need to have value-driven investments. This to talks to us as Christians. Um, Christians, you cannot invest in any of, in some of the companies. So I'm gonna give an example. So you need to exclude companies that are considered immoral. We also have what we call sim stocks or shares, in other words, you cannot invest as an Adventist in a company that sells tobacco. 
You cannot invest at, in shares at SA breweries. You cannot invest in a company that sells pornography. And I, I learned that the general conference actually has companies that it has vetted for us to be able to invest. Okay, moving to the next part is you need to understand your investment. Uh, here we're talking about, you need to understand that what is your risk reward in this investment? Um, so um, before I go to the risk reward, every investment that you take has a risk. Similarly, the same way that it also has a reward because you're gonna invest with the hope that you're gonna get a return, okay? So the return could be interest, dividend, or whatever you are investing in as a capital, then the return will be either of those. But you also need to understand how much you can go in terms of your risk. That means you need to define your risk appetite upfront. Also, when you are investing, it's very important that you know the costs that are involved in that particular investment. I'm gonna give an example. Um, if you invest, there's what we call sometimes admin costs. If you're not careful, the returns that you make on that investment may be eaten away by the costs associated with that investment. And you, you end up paying the cost from the capital that you've invested. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So you need to be mindful of the uh, costs that are involved when you are investing. I can make a typical example, which is very personal. I had an investment with uh, some company and I was paying the financial planner and I was also paying the administration costs to the company itself. And I looked, my investment was not growing. And then when I asked for the statement, I realized that the costs of this investment outweighed the rewards or the benefit that I was getting. So you need to be mindful of the costs involved in the investment. Also, you also need to be aware of the regulations. You have the FICA and all these other um, uh, regulating bodies that are regulating the investments. Because some of these regulations, they can protect you as an investor. Some of them, they can leave you exposed to more risk. Um, most important is you need to know your time horizon. I'm gonna give an example here. Uh, Adam Lanjana has Lisa as the last born. Uh, Lisa is one year. And in the next 18 years, Lisa is going to start tertiary. So Adam Lanjani needs to find an investment that is going to fit that time horizon, depending on whether he is investing for Lisa's education. So you need to be aware of your horizon so that you find or you pick an investment that fits within your time horizon. Also, if you, your plan is to invest for a long term, you need to be aware that the returns or the shares or whatever you're investing in, the returns might fluctuate. The share price today might go up, tomorrow it goes down, tomorrow it goes up again. But if you are a long-term investor, this is not gonna affect you. If the objective of your investment is long-term, the fluctuation in your investment or returns on your investment is not gonna affect you. However, if your view is short-term, you want to invest on in something that's gonna give you returns very quickly, within the short term of time, within the short space of time, with less risk, okay? Uh, we're also gonna learn that the longer the term to maturity of your investment, the higher the reward, also the higher the risk because anything can happen in between. Um, also, we need to be ex expect reasonable returns. And uh, I think we've seen lately the, the rise in all these uh, get rich quick schemes. Someone comes to you, invest in here, and then in the next 12 days, you're gonna get four times the amount. There is no such a thing. So, and this is where most people get scammed, where you get all these investments and people are promising us heaven and earth when in actual fact, it is not true. So investing is not a get rich quick scheme. So you can't expect to double or triple your return on investment overnight. Um, the other thing when you expect reasonable returns is that you need to be aware of the, the return on your investment portfolio and that it should not, it should, the return on your investment portfolio 
it should outpace inflation. What I mean by that, if you invest and you get a return of 5% and, you put, and you're, the inflation is sitting at 6.5%, already you are out of the money on that investment because the inflation is going to wipe off 5% of your returns. And you are, again, you are in the deficit in terms of the purchasing power. So again, you need to expect reasonable returns. And uh, like I've already mentioned, every investment has a risk. So there's no such thing as um, a risk-free investment. So for an example, you can say, I'm going to invest in government stocks. So the government is not going to default on paying me the interest, or if you invest in government bonds, they're not gonna default on paying me um, interest. But again, as mentioned above, that investment might be outpaced by the inflation risk, which again, affect your purchasing power. So what we're trying to say is you need to define your risk appetite and you need to choose investments that are within your risk appetite. Um, the other item that I wanted us to discuss talks to diversifying your investment. In um, years ago, when I did financial management, there was a saying that goes like, you cannot keep all your eggs in one basket meaning you cannot invest in telecom, CELC, um, Vodacom, and which is the other one, or MTN. The reason for that, all these companies, they have similar risks and the returns, are, remember I'm saying similar risk, I'm not saying the same risk. So they have similar risk, they have the similar returns. So when we say you need to diversify your investment, you need to look at investing in different companies in different sectors of the economy. You can invest in energy, you can invest in healthcare, you can invest in information technology, real estate or financial services. By that you're managing your risk and you're also making sure that your portfolio is well balanced. Okay, I'm not seeing if there are questions and I'm hoping that there are no questions. And the last part that I want us to look at, um, you need to take advantage of the compound interest. So Albert Einstein has this to say about compound interest. He says, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, ends it. If you don't understand it, that means you pay it. Basically compound interest is, is if you invest 100 and then, by the, and then the interest rate is 10%, end of December, you have 110, you reinvest the, 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 the amount or you carry forward, you roll forward the investment. That means now your interest is on 110, not only on 100, which is the initial deposit that you had paid. So you need to take into consideration such things when you're investing. Don't just take the simple interest, which is only applied to the initial deposit that you have made. Um, if we look at the types of investment, um, basically you have four main types of assets that you can choose from. And each type of asset has its distinct characteristics, risk as well as rewards or benefits. And you can also split these classes in terms of growth investments as well as uh, defensive investments, okay? Uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, so when we look at growth investments, we're really looking at investments that are suitable for long-term investors. So if you're looking to invest long-term, your growth investments are your next bet. So, um, so like I've mentioned before, because they are long-term, the returns might fluctuate, but at the end, you might get um, good returns because the longer the term, the higher the return and the higher the risk. Basically, with your investment, you expect to be rewarded for the risk that you have taken, okay? So the examples of growth investments, we're looking at shares, that's the term that is used here. In other countries, they use equity. In other countries, they use stock. Um, so this is how you can, grow. when we say they are growth investments, say today you buy five shares at, um, at Namisa Limited, each share is five rent, no, no, you buy five shares at Namisa Limited and the shares today, they cost 200 rand. That means the cost of the shares is 500 rand. Then after five years, remember we said long term, after five years or 10 years, 
you can then sell the shares. How are you gonna make your returns? Let's say by the time you sell the shares, they are now 150. You bought them for five, 400 each, they are now 150. That means you make 50 rent capital gain on each or per share. So that's the one way of getting the returns on shares. The other one, some companies, they declare what we call is a dividend. Basically a dividend is a portion of the company's profits that gets paid out to shareholders. Again, that's another benefit. So those are the returns that you can expect when you invest in shares. Um, as mentioned again, shares are the riskiest types of investment. Uh, you can invest in Namisa Limited today. I'm promising to be a good company. Something happens two years down the line and before you know it, Namisa goes under. That's one of the risks that you can expect. At the same time, there's always um, the upside, which is the shares might appreciate in value. One other example of um, growth investments is property. We know all of, all of us know this. You can buy a house or a flat today, uh, keep it for the next five years or 10 years, property appreciates in value. You can then after a year or, I mean, five years or 10 years, you sell it. You bought it for 500,000, you can sell it for 650,000. Again, you've made a capital gain of 150,000. So those are growth investments. So those are long-term. So these are suitable for long-term investors, okay? Um, moving to what we call defensive um, investments. Here, you are basically focusing on investments that are consistently generating income. So as opposed to the growth that we've mentioned on the growth investments. And we've got a couple of examples here cash investments. So these include your, your money market, um, your savings account, your short-term deposits, your notice deposits, say you have a six month deposit or whatever, 24 hour deposits. These ones, remember at first we said you need sometimes to invest in, on investments that you can easily access your cash. This, this is an example of um, investments that you can invest on and then you can access your cash by giving a notice, be it 12 months, depending on the terms of that particular investment. Um, there's one other cash investment that I want us to talk about, which is a tax-free investment, but I'm not gonna talk about it now, I will talk about it later. The other example of um, a defensive investment is what we call a fixed interest, that is uh, the bonds. So a bond can be a government bond, or a corporate bond, how it works. Let's say MTN is running out of funds. They don't want to increase their share capital. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna issue a paper in the market and say, please buy this. So they raise a bond for a billion. You go, you buy a portion of that bond or you buy the whatever. So what MTN then is going to do is going to pay you interest over the, 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 the bond term. It could also be a government bond. So again, it's similar to the corporate bank. The, the return here really is um, the interest that you get on that bond. So the interest here is fixed, so it's not linked to the fluctuations or the variable interest rates. The all good thing um, about this is that the bonds can be sold in what we call secondary market. So when MTN first issues that bond, that's a primary market, when now, you can sell it. Let's say now I'm sitting with this paper that says MTN owes me 100,000. Let's say I subscribe to the bond for 100,000. So I'm a bond holder and I'm, I'm short of cash. So that instrument is very liquid in that I can go into the secondary market and sell that, that bond, get my money back. And then someone else becomes the holder of that particular bond. Um, I said, I wanted us to touch on the tax-free interest rates. And you can move to the next slide. I'm so confused with mine, I cannot get there. So the tax interest free rate, um, it can be a money market, uh, it can be a fixed term bank account, or it can be a unit trust or any other JSE, JSE um, listed traded fund. Why we're calling it tax free is that the interest or the return, so the return could be an interest, it could be a capital gain, or it could be a dividend, is that it is not taxed. 
Okay, that's the beauty about it. Um, also, um, there are tax considerations that we have to think about. Um, for 2021, you have a limit on how much you can invest on the tax-free savings. So that limit is 36,000. And I think based on today's budget speech, that amount or that limit has not changed. So per annum, you can invest 36,000 on a tax-free savings account. And um, over a lifetime, that amount is kept at 500,000. So those are the downsides. The other downside is that there is no rollover on the unused limit. Let me give you an example. If we're saying you have to invest 6,000 and you decide in 2021 that you're going to invest um, 30,000, you cannot then roll over to the next year or carry over to the next year the 6,000 that you didn't invest this year. So you get the benefit on the 30,000 that you've invested. The other downside is that if you exceed the, the 36,000, so that you have to pay a penalty based on your average tax rate that you pay as an individual. So let's say you decide to be generous and you have so much money, you invest 40,000 instead of 6,000. The 4,000 difference is going to be subject to penalties at your marginal tax rate. So that's the downside to the tax-free savings account. Um, Remember I said the tax-free savings account, you can have it with a bank, you can have it with a unit trust, you can have it with any other JSC listed uh, traded fund. I listened on the radio last week and there was someone talking that he was not advising. I know I'm an employee of the bank, probably I shouldn't be saying this, but he was saying that if you invest in a bank tax-free savings, your returns are limited to interest. So basically your returns are kept to what the interest rate is that the bank is offering. However, if you invest in a tax-free savings using the unit trust or any other form of investment, the upside in terms of the returns is not limited. So he was advising against uh, investing in a tax-free savings products that are offered by the banks. Please invest in the banks because that's where my salary is coming from. I digress. Um, the other investment uh, product that I want us to look at is the retirement annuity fund. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, so if you look at the retirement annuity, basically really it's a long-term investment. Um, it is meant to subsidize you or to give you money when you are at retirement, okay? Um, so uh, let's say you, you invest, you, you, you contribute every month towards your retirement. And then when you retire, I'm gonna retire in the next uh, 16 years. Let's say I have in my retirement annuity, 600,000. I have an option at retirement to access a third of that retirement amount, the capital in cash, okay? So, and then the remainder will be paid out in the form of annuity, meaning I'll be paid monthly. So the tax benefit of me accessing the third of that uh, retirement annuity or that retirement fund is that the first 25,000 is tax-free. So I'm gonna be taxed. So if I, I access a third of 600, which is 200, I'll only be taxed on 175,000. Okay, so there are tables for how you tax that. So the 25,000 will be tax free. So you can use that money to clear your debts because now you're at retirement, your pension is not gonna cover all your expenses and you're trying to make sure that also the amount that you're gonna get from the retirement annuity over the period of months is going to cover your lifestyle. Um, the minimum amount that you can invest on retirement annuity is 250 rent per month which is not bad. And there are also tax benefits that you can get on this on when you choose retirement annuity. Uh, for 2021, I'm not sure if anything has changed in 2022 budget speech, but is that the amount that you contribute to retirement annuity is tax deductible. Is REF the same as provident fund, 
No. REF is something that you take outside. Sometimes the provident fund is, is provident and pension fund. They are administered by your employer. Obviously, they're using the provident fund company that they are linked with. I'm going to give an example. Standard Bank, we have a pension fund, which is admi administered by not Liberty, which company is this now? Uh, I forgot it. But retirement annuity, you can take it with, um, with any of the investment companies. Tabani has left the meeting and my presentation. I'm not sure if I've answered the question, but retirement annuity is something that you contribute outside the money that you have received from your employer. Whereas pension and provident is deducted by your employer and is administrated by the fund that is responsible for your employer's um, pensions or provident. Uh, back to considerations of the retirement annuity fund, I said your contributions are tax deductible. That means um, if your taxable income before your retirement annuity was 100 and you contributed, um, whatever your contributions are, your taxable income is gonna, you're gonna claim a deduction, meaning your taxable income is going to reduce, meaning you're gonna pay less tax. That's what we mean is the benefit. However, there's a limit to the deduction, it gets a bit technical. So the limit is really is the lesser of, so it's kept at 350,000 or the higher of 27.5% of your remuneration. Remuneration is defined in the Tax Act or 27.5% of your taxable income after taxable capital gain. So whichever is the lesser of these three amounts that I've mentioned, that is going to be limited to. So if you then contribute 750,000 to your retirement annuity, you're going to cap it at 350,000. That's the deduction that you're going to get. I know other people who have money when they receive their bonuses, my employer, what they do, they take that money, they go and um, put it in the, in the retirement annuity fund so that come November when they file their returns, they get a very big check as a refund. Um, so basically that's what um, I've prepared on um, investments. And to conclude in the book, uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume four, Ellen White says, you have nothing to fear. Invest your means where it will be doing good. Scatter rays of light to the darkest parts of the world. Christ has given all for you. What will you give for him? He asks for your heart, give it to him. It is his own. He asks for your intellect. You cannot invest if you're not clever here, if your intellect doesn't exist here. Christ asked us for our intellect and we need to give it to him. It is his own. He gave us. Remember the verses that we read uh, when we started the presentation. He asks for our money, we need to give it to him. It is his own. Uh, may the good Lord bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. I'll hand over to Elder Moore. Uh, thank you. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, for that presentation. I must admit that um, it was uh, packed. It was packed, and uh, and while you were uh, presenting, uh, I see there's a question there. Just disappeared. Assistant, I'm sure you can see the question. It says, Are uh, all. Can you see the question, Sister Namsa? Okay, uh, there's a comment from Nandi Nomaja. As from 2021, taxpayers are allowed to make uh, retirement annuity or pension or provident contributions towards additional services. Intention is to retire with more money. And all of these contributions are tax deductible. Okay, so I think you've you've answered the the, the question uh, that was put there on whether they are uh, tax deductible. Um, thank you very much, uh, Sister Ngamisa. I was thinking while you were uh, presenting that uh, perhaps uh, 
the the leadership will give us an opportunity outside of this forum one time whereby we need to um, maybe ask questions or discuss more because uh, like I said, uh, the presentation was uh, packed and there's a lot of information and I'm sure the saints do have uh, some uh, questions on the on the presentations. I do have questions myself. Um, okay. And thank you very much, like I said, very good one. Uh, Sister Ngamsa will ask you to pray for us uh, before we break. Next week, we are going to look at uh, prosperity reassessed, prosperity reassess so it's uh, a continuation from where we have left off today uh sister Namisa, if you may pray for us shall we pray our father who art in heaven dear lord we thank you this evening we thank you lord for the opportunity to gather as your children and to share lord words of wisdom and to share your word dear lord we thank you so much for everything that you have done for us we thank you for keeping us safe dear lord as we learn of how to manage our finances and how we can partner with you in terms of managing our finances and what we can do to better and be able to use the finances that you've given us wisely. Help us, Lord, to grasp the concepts that we're being told and help us, Lord, to invest wisely. Help us, Lord, to partner with you um, and help us, Lord, to achieve what we're trying to do. Father God, be with the, all the families that are represented here. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you may bless them as Lord as they're making decisions on how to do better with the finances, be at the center, Lord, of the decisions that they are making. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if there are any uh, announcements, uh, Elder Ati. Anything? No announcements. Okay. Thank you very much uh, to the Saints. May we have a very good evening. Uh, we are going to meet again on Friday for the prayers at uh, half past eight in the evening. Then we are going to meet on, uh, okay, we are not meeting on Sabbath. I, I, I thought, uh, okay, I, I'm sure we are aware of the announcements that is there regarding our the outing to the Val. So we are not meeting this Sabbath in church. Uh, we are going to be guided by the announcement that has been posted there. Thank you very much. Have a very good evening, everyone.